the map that I have been able to display in your screen, of course this is the map of Kenya, uh, showing some forested areas, and uh, of course it was in the form of a question. You can be able to see the map of Kenya, you can be able to see those forest reserves, we have the Boni or the Dundori forest, we have the Rabuko Sokoke forest, those ones that are found in the, in, in the coast, together with the Boni and the Kaya forest, uh, as they are marked on the map as A, B, C. Then we have the Mount Kenya forest, the Abadea forest, the Mau forest, the Kakamega forest, the Mount Ergon forest and the Charangani forests. And of course, you can be able to see that distribution of those forests in Kenya. Now, there is a chart here, or a table, that is showing types of natural forests. Of course, we have the major forest zones and the major forest blocks. And uh, if you see, these are the classifications of uh, forests. Of course, it is in Kenya. We have the coastal forests, which include the Shiba Hills Forest, the Tana River Forest, the Arabuko Sokoke Forest Reserve, the Boni or Dodori Forest. Then we have the Kaya and the Magruf Forest. Then we have the dry forests. They include the Mount Masabit Forest, the Mount Kurar Forest, the Manga Hills Forest, the Chiru Hills Forest, the Makueni Forest, the Kitui Forest, the Roima Forest, the Taita Hills, the Machakos Forest, the Mwingi Forest, uh, the Nyirodotos Forest, the Nguria Hills Forest, and the ETC. Those are examples of the dry forests. Then we have the mountain or highland forest, which include the Abandea uh, Ridges Forest, the Kaptagat Forest, the Gong Hills Forest. We have Mount Kenya Forest, Marmanet Forest, Karura Forest, uh, Mau Forest, Cherangani Forest, the Tarubo Forest, the Band Forest, the Kinare Forest. Then we have the Western Lane Forest, which include the Mount Ergon Forest, the Northern Andi Forest, the Guazi Hills Forest, the South Nandi Forest, and we have the Kakamega Forest. This is just a chart to show you how the natural forests of Kenya are distributed across the countries together with their types. Of course, we have the coastal forest, the dry forest, the mountain or highland forest. Then we also have the Western Lane Forest. Your syllabus demands that uh, we should be able to discuss and be able to highlight and explain and describe the factors that influence the distribution and the types of natural forests. Uh, and we have several factors that influence their distribution. Of course, we have the climate, the soils, the aspects, the relief or topography. Then we also have government policy. Now, Whenever we are looking at climate, of course, we are limited to such um, elements like the temperature, the rainfall, most of the times. But you can also talk of the cool conditions, the warm conditions, the hot conditions, etc. So for climate, which is our factor number one, uh, the upper slopes of mountains or polar regions have very cold conditions which discourage the growth of forests. High rainfall with high temperature encourages faster growth of forests. Some mountain peaks or tops are ice capped, leading to poorly developed soils. Or most of the time we talk of permafrost conditions leading to absence of forest. Then high temperature with low rainfall leads to scanty forests. Then moderate to high temperature or cool to warm conditions allows growth of a variety of trees. And that is it for the climate. So I have said, whenever we are discussing about climate, we are limited to the elements of weather, like the temperature, the rainfall, or a combination of both. I think we are moving well. Then we have the factor on soil. Uh, deep, well-drained, fertile soils allow root penetration, which encourage growth of forests, while thin, immature soils discourage the growth of forests. Then, in case you are to speak of other characteristics of soil, maybe you can talk of thin soils. Thin soils uh, will inhibit root development, leading to stunted growth of trees or discouraging growth of trees, etc. Then we have another factor of aspects. 
the aspect. Remember, aspect is simply the direction of a slope in relationship to the sun or the rain bearing cloud. So in very simple terms, it is that, that angle of a slope in relationship to the sun or the rain bearing cloud. And that's why we, in my points, you can be able to see that the south facing slopes in the northern hemisphere are warmer than the north facing slopes, hence those southern facing slopes will have more forests. The windward slopes of high mountains receive high relief rainfall, which encourage forest growth, while the leeward slopes receive low and reliable rainfall, which discourage forest growth. Then we have relief or topography. And of course, relief is the general appearance of land, the general alignment of land in the form of, it, of its surface. So, is the, the, is the land hilly? Does it have steep slopes? Is the land gently sloping? Is it undulating? Those are the issues that we talk about when we look at relief as a factor influencing the distribution um, and occurrence of natural forests. So, very steep slopes have been immature soils that discourage forest growth, while gentle slopes have weak, deep soils which encourage growth of forests. Then, steep or rugged slopes, steep or rugged slopes, um, they discourage settlement and cultivation, thus allowing forest growth. I think. Um, it is good that I highlight something. It's okay. Then the last point we have government policy. Remember the government of the day can be able to gazette an area to be a forest reserve or can also gazette an area which was formerly a forest reserve. And uh, people are given permission to settle, they can purchase the land, they can be able to do what we call pri uh, uh, private development to the land. So in very simple terms, the government can either gazette an area to be a forest reserve, or the gazette an area to be no longer a forest reserve. So the government have a role to play in such an area, so that we have forests um, in those areas. So next we look at the importance or importances of forests and the forest products. And um, we can be able to see that these forests and their products, they have many uses. One, many forests act as catchment areas, giving rise to rivers whose water can be used for generation of hydroelectric power or irrigation purposes or industrial uses or domestic uses. Forests are used in the soil conservation as they control or as they check soil erosion. Remember the plant trees, the trees in the forest, the root system is able to bind the soil particles together, reducing the impact on the agents of erosion, and hence controlling soil erosion. Then the other point, most forests are habitats to a wide range of animals or of plants and microorganisms, hence conserving the biodiversity. Then some trees, and here it is good to be very specific, not all of them, but some trees in the forest produce edible fruits, which are a source of food to both animals and humans. Again, some tree products like timber act as raw materials for some industries like building and construction industries. Then the forest, of course, they regulate the climate of an area by creating what we call microclimates, which modify the climatic conditions of a place. Most forests have aesthetic value. That simply means they are beautiful to look at, hence attract tourists who bring foreign exchange. Uh, some, some, some plants or trees in the forest have medicinal values. Some trees are used in the cottage industries. Uh, when you see the term cottage industry, it simply means the juakali uh, industries. To make wood carvings, wooden utensils, which can be sold to earn income. Then forestry, as an industry, creates job opportunities. It creates job opportunities to people like the forest guards, the forest officers, and of course, raising their standards of living. 
Uh, we now go to the problems facing forestry in Kenya. The problems facing forestry in Kenya. Do we have issues? Do we have challenges that we face as a, 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 a citizen, as a government of Kenya, when uh, in, in regard to the forests or forest activities? So it will be able to identify that we have various problems. Of course, most of the problems they are caused by humans through their activities as they try to better their lives. One of the problems, we have an increased population, risk to illegal encroachment of forest areas for agriculture and settlement, which destroys large forested areas. Then we have increased population of wild animals like giraffes and elephants. Uh, these animals debug and uproot the trees, thus destroying large forested areas. Forest fires, which be, could, could be accidental or um, by human choice, destroy large areas of forest, which take long to recover or regenerate. Then we have prolonged droughts that causes forest trees to dry and regenerate, which with the trees taking long time to recover. Plant diseases are the pests like the white aphids. They attack and destroy some valuable planted tree species, reducing the area under forests. Then we have over-exploitation of some tree species, especially the hardwoods, which take a long time to mature, hence decreasing the forests. And then we have government policy of degazating some forests, um, which have made people or private developers to clear many forested areas. Then we have, of course, illegal logging and indiscriminate cutting of trees, which results in reduction or depletion of some indigenous tree species. So far, so good. So we now go to the management and conservation of forests. And uh, it's good to be able to differentiate between the terms management and conservation in relationship to forests. Now, management. It refers to the effective planning and control of forests and forest resources, where conservation is the protection of natural forests against interference and destruction by people. That's a very clear difference between the management and the conservation. Uh, now, I want us to look at the ways the government of Kenya is using to manage and conserve forests. Now, one, Encouraging afforestation or reforestation programs to increase the land under forests, educating the public through mass media and public barazas to create awareness on the importance of conserving forest resources, enacting rules that prohibit cutting of trees without license and for protecting indigenous tree species, establishment of NEMA, that is national environmental management authority to coordinate all activities on environmental conservation, gazetting some forested areas to create forest reserves, to control human encroachment, allowing forest growth, employing forest guards to prevent illegal logging and other destructive activities in the forest, establishment of Nyayo tea zones to create buffer zones, to prevent people from encroaching forests, setting aside three planting days, and encouraging agroforestry of people to plant more trees, evicting people out of forested areas to allow rehabilitation of destroyed forest areas like Mount Kenya and Ma. So those are just some of the ways um, of how management and conservation is undertaken in Kenya. But that does not mean that those are the only points. Of course, uh, by reading and doing more research, you can be able to come up with more and more points on the same.